We are already halfway through season three of The Mandalorian. What a roller coaster this hasn't been. There's only eight episodes. We just got done watching the fourth. I'm going to talk about it. Let's begin. If this is your first time here, I've been doing these recap videos every week, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video. Uh, I also do a lot of other non-Mando related content. It's called Adam Does Movies, so naturally the bulk of the material is movie based. Anyway, this is going to be filled with spoilers. I am going to be breaking down everything that happened. Uh, I'm not some hardcore Star Wars guy, so names elude me, locations I might trip up on. Basically, I'm just breaking down this show, its entertainment value, the purpose of it at this point, and how I feel about it. To me, the first two seasons of Mandalorian have been fantastic. It's taken a major nosedive since season three, really since season two and a half, which was the book of Boba Fett. Complete disaster. And since then, they have not fully recovered. Here we are on episode four. Are things better? Well, they're certainly more entertaining than the last one, which was a side story about Moth Gideon's crew and what they're up to. How that ties into the overall narrative is anyone's guess, including the writers of this show, because there's no consistency. Initially, I thought, okay, they're going to focus on Din Djarin becoming a Mandalorian again. He's going to have to go on a tough quest, have to go to all these different places, and nope, he's already won again. Three episodes in, he's already a fully-fledged member. And so is Bo-Katan. And she didn't even want to be one. But this whole Mandalorian cult is such a joke. And the more they expand upon it, the more I roll my eyes and think, man, Din Djarin's kind of a sucker. Why does he want to be part of this group? It's, it's embarrassing at this point. We'll break that down. I just have to start out with the fact that, okay, the rules say that if he bathes... If an unwashed, unpure, unclean Mando from the past has lost his way, but he then cleans himself off by bathing in the uh, living waters on planet Mando, or whatever the hell it's called, then he can be brought back into the fold, or she. In this case, it's both. Din Djarin trips over his own stupidity, falls into the living waters, and has to be saved by Bo-Katan, who is essentially tails to Sonic the Hedgehog at this point. He's constantly in harm's way. She has to fly her ass down and save him, pick him back up with her two spinning tails. And now she's also a fully fledged Mandalorian. And man, did the tribe accept her quickly. She's already leading them in her first, it's, it's been like a day and she's already like the head Mandalorian. It's, it's so stupid, but let, we're jumping ahead. This episode opens with these bounty hunters on the beach, that same beach where there was a giant crocodile creature that almost killed half of them. Yeah, they're out there again training, like nothing happened the day before. Anyway, this scene is embarrassing. It looks like a bunch of bros doing CrossFit in the gym. There's no semblance of structure. A couple guys are like blocking. Others are just randomly shooting into the water. It's bedlam. It's chaos. It's pandemonium. But then we get to a little structure when Din Djarin says, Hey, Grogu, Gragu, whatever the hell your name is, why don't you spar with this kid? With this youngling over here, just because I want to kind of like flex how cool you are. So they play a game of darts. Each contestant has a little shooter on the side of their wrist where they point and hit him with like a paintball gun, basically. Three shots, you're done. And it would seem, based on the rules, you take a shot, you reset, you do it again. Kind of like karate. You get a good kick in, reset, do the next one. Except for what happens here is the kid... Hits Grogu two times, like, boom, point one, boom, point two. And then instead of the kid finishing him, Grogu does a double flip, somersault kiss, twist, and then boom, 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 hits him with three of them at once. I assumed he could only hit him one time and then get that point, and then we would go for the next two. But no, he just straight up circumvents the rules and he wins because of showmanship, I guess. Kind of, kind of bizarre. Before any real celebration can ensue, a new challenger appears. A dragon flies down, swoops in, kidnaps a child, and then, and then just takes off on the horizon. This might have happened a few times before because one of the Mandalorians, I think it's the one with the huge ass Gatlin gun. 
I don't know his name. We're going to call him Gatlin Joe for the, for the remainder of this episode. He's like, we can never catch this guy. <laughs> it's always getting away. Their jetpacks aren't strong enough or something. Even though in the previous episode, we said Din Djarin free fall from space and use this jetpack as like a little, just a little booster stop. He's going hundreds of miles an hour. And just a little boost from the jets. <laughs> Keeps him from splatting on the ground. Just no consistency with these packs. Bo-Katan, who's now in charge of all the Mandalorians for some reason, assembles a crew. And she also knows this planet better than they do. I, no, nothing makes sense. I don't understand. As that's happening, little Grogu, or Grogu, I'm going to switch it up depending on how I feel in the moment. He's hanging out with female Mandalorian lady that really only says this is the way and then makes shit. We've seen her make like 80,000 pieces of Mandalorian armor now. That, that seems to be the only thing she does. As she's making this, sparks fly and sparks also erupt inside of our little Grogu mind. We're treated to a prequel flashback. Gotta love these. But this time baby Grogu is getting saved not just by some basic bitches. He's got a Jedi with him. This cool new Jedi who looks somewhat familiar and has a voice that's unmistakable to the ear. Probably because it's Jar Jar Binks, now in human form. That's right, Disney's putting their Ahmed best foot forward, giving this guy a little bit of redemption. He gets to play a cool Jedi, he gets to save this little baby, this little baby alien. And before this flashback really goes anywhere or builds to anything, we're back in present time, hunting the dragon again. This leads to the campfire sequence, which really drives home how stupid this crew is. We have a group of Mandalorians at night setting up shop. They have their fire going. They're cooking some dinner. And that's when Bo-Katan goes, so how do we eat if we can't take our helmets off? Din Djarin, without missing a beat or even thinking about how dumb this sounds, is like, oh yeah, we all just kind of sneak away into different corners where we can't be seen by each other. And then we just eat, you know, <coughs> And then we head back to the fire. How ridiculous. And even if I was to take this from the mind of like an assassin or a hunter, I don't think it's wise to at night disband your entire crew into different corners of the earth just so that you can have a meal in peace and not break your code. The next morning, after all of them presumably had a great night's sleep in their armor with their masks on, unless they also slept in different areas where they couldn't see each other. Hey, 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 Din? Din? I see your feet. If I see that helmet off, you're done. You're done, so buddy. And you just got back into the crew. So if you get kicked out again, then what are you going to do? Take your super fast spaceship back to the planet, go back into the living water again? <laughs> Good luck. That took you one episode to do last time. After a rocky sequence of wall climbing, we are then treated to an actual good section of the show where they are pursuing this dragon in the air. It feels like you're up there with them. It's pretty intense. Uh, I, I kind of dug this. It only lasts for a few minutes, but it's solid. It ends like all things do now with the dragon falling into the water and then another Jurassic World-esque monster comes out of nowhere and eats it. They're just down there waiting. They're always waiting. Ooh-wee, I can't wait for another dragon to fall into my mouth. That's how they sound. That's how they talk. This whole section led to so many questions. One, why were there other helmets up there? I think that's obvious. Other kids have been taken and killed, so great job, guys. Two, why was this kid even still alive? The dragon kept him over a night? Wanted to wait for breakfast to feed his younglings? Whatever. Three, why are the Mandalorians on this planet? The waters are filled with massive monster creatures that can wipe out half of them without even batting an eye. Last time they probably would have died had Din Djarin not conveniently been flying in the sky that same day. There's also dragons here that are kidnapping the kids and eating them. So you have threats in the water, you have threats in the sky, you probably have threats on land too. I mean, you put your damn cave right next to these two places. It's just insane. It's asinine. After the beast is slayed, the orphaned baby dragons are now going to come back with the Mandalorians. They may have said what they're going to do with them. They were in shackles. Uh, I would assume they're going to eat them, but I don't know if it was clearly ever stated. Maybe they'll just be pets. Maybe they'll train them to fly 
and they can ride on them like how to train your dragon or some dumb crap i don't know i, I wasn't disrespecting how to train your dragon that trilogy is fantastic we should be watching that instead of the mandalorian that, that's really what should be happening right now. Before we finished watching the episode, there was a nice forceful intermission, thanks to the Disney Plus app freezing. So we got a nice three to five minute break where I was fiddling with the damn thing, trying to get it to load again. It's always a fun time. It's consistent. I'll say that. It is consistent. We end this episode with Bo-Katan, now fully invested in this dumb cause. She has a new armor piece, replaced the shoulder with the one that she lost during the dragon flight. Now she has a mythosaur symbol on there because yeah of course fully fully invested drank the kool-aid she's all in this is really unfortunate because um bo katan was the only character i actually thought was cool anymore because she didn't have the helmet on she was a badass she didn't believe in the stupid things that they were doing she's a mandalorian in her own right i and i genuinely have no idea where this show is going my investment is a zero at this point i don't care about anyone even little cute Grogu, the, I, who I used to go, oh, every time you would show up. I don't care at all. Now he really is nothing more than a little prop that, that sells merchandise. I mean, I'm so cynical on this whole thing because they lost me. They lost the plot. It has no purpose anymore at all. And I don't know how it's going to tie in with the Andorish kind of garbage they did in the last episode. And I don't care. I really don't. We're going to finish because uh, I'm dedicated to bringing these to you. Maybe it'll somehow turn the corner and all these pieces will fit together. I just don't see it. I don't have the faith that I once had in this production. Let me know your thoughts. Are you with me or do you think, oh, this was great. What a, what a wonderful experience this was. I can't wait for more misadventures with this Mandalorian crew. Or are you like me and you appreciate it when it was more mysterious and it was just Din Djarin and little Grogu going on their Last of Us style adventure to get the thing to safety. It was simpler. It was more of a Wild West show. And now it really just feels like another Disney production where they're just throwing anything at the wall. Like the video if you had a good time. Again, please subscribe if you haven't. I post these every week. I post a lot of movie reviews in between. So I'd love to have you stick around try to keep this channel growing. All right, thank you very much, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. Dum ba ba bum ba ba bum bum bum. A fa ba 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 sum ba ba bum ba ba bum bum da. Scan da 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 da. This show is a cash grab. Thanks for sticking around since you're still here. I should also point out I have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. With that membership, which starts at $1 a month, you're showing the channel support. One man operation could use the help. YouTube payout is embarrassingly low. You could also become a member here on YouTube via the YouTube join button. It works the same way. Different tiers. If you jump up to Mithril, which is 30 bucks, you get a movie review on the house. You, add, you say, Adam, I want you to watch this movie and review it, and I will, and give you a shout out. It's pretty awesome. Those are options.